are you? I'm great. Welcome back. Well, thanks for having me back. Uh, I want to get right into it. You were an actual communications director at a White House. Uh, Not a celebrated one at that. No. But... Well, we didn't realize at the time <laughs> that how, how important it was to it. have communications directed. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, you worked in, uh, in the Bush White House, and now you are seeing uh, this White House, which is not, I would say communications is not a strength. To be fair, <laughs> they have very few strengths. Um, but what, what do you feel at a time like this when messaging is so important? How, uh, how do you perceive what's happening right now? So this is one of those things that I wish we were wrong about, people who are critical and um, who see the flaws. This is one of those ones where when Donald Trump says, oh, a miracle's going to take corona away, the, I, that's like the one in a million things where I'm like, oh, I wish he were right. Yeah. But the, the problem, and, and look, here, here's the other thing. I mean, we have a global pandemic, and he's liar, liar, pants on fire, president. Who saw this coming? I mean, this was where it was always going to land. Right. We were always going to need him to have more credibility on the world stage, to level with us, and to be more competent than he is when our health and our family's health was on the line. And, and sadly, it took something like this, I think, to even shake the confidence of some members of his base. The virus doesn't have... A political affiliation. I guess time will tell if it actually is shaking the confidence of his base because it is interesting. Certainly in the early stages, we are seeing uh, very smart people, uh, very talented people who are trying to deal with this crisis who are, as we pointed out, also trying to do this sort of triangulation of also figuring out how not to offend him. Are you surprised when oh, you see... Oh, the dear leader stuff? Yeah, when you see brilliant doctors who are making <laughs> the choice to say, like, and also, let me just say, you are doing a really good job, too. Yeah, look, I don't know where that chip comes from. I mean, I, I think it's part of the reward structure, and, and it, he's very, you know, off with your head. Anyone that doesn't tell him, he's brilliant. But, I mean, you, you cover the, the same stories I do every day. The things people say to him... Um, especially when the public safety is on the line, are really, really troubling. You uh, obviously went through some crises in your time as a communications director. Uh, each is different. Uh, what, how did you deal with the ones that, that you faced in, in your time in the White House? We were ready for the bird flu. That was the mm -hmm. pandemic that we were prepared for. And people like to joke that um, Bush wasn't steeped in history, but he read every... He was reading books about the plague. We were all given sort of take-home reading about um, how things spread. We were drilling on Saturdays and Sundays, red teams and blue teams, for how something would, um, you know, go from city to city. And you look at the way this White House communicates, it's all about goosing the stock market. I mean, yeah. no one seems to even have in mind. I don't, you know, if you've got kids in school and you go to work, you rely on sort of the infrastructure and the, and the trustworthy flow of information to make decisions about how to keep your family safe. And, and that's where I think if this goes on, no one is, again, the coronavirus is not Donald Trump's fault, but everything he's done in exaggerating about the status of tests and lying about its severity and saying it'll just go away, that's all on him. Well, we talked about this as well, the idea that it's not his fault, right, that it started. But if it had started under Obama, Donald Trump would be the guy on Fox and Friends saying it was his fault. He it was, was Obama's he fault. Was. During, it was during yeah. Ebola, he was on Twitter every day right. saying, you know, keep them all out, lock the borders. I mean, during Ebola, he did more fear-mongering than anything. I feel like somebody should go to him and say, hey, you don't have to do this because you're Donald Trump and uh, there's not another one like you out there right now. <laughs> I feel like someone you're should, safe. should go and say, look, we've had to take down the comms. The, the Wi-Fi's out. Yeah. Um, and... You're going to have three weeks to golf, no Twitter, and, and his approval rating would go up. Yeah. We'd he be safer. But he couldn't, he couldn't stay We'd on. be safer. Yeah. His approval rating would go up. Uh -huh. The doctors could function without, as you said, the you know, intermittent yeah. dear leader, you're so good at science, yeah. baloney. Um, and, and we'd have a, a direct line of communication from real um, experts.